I'm nearing the end of my time in South Africa, searching out its fierce animals. Oh, yes! Oh, it's too hot for this. I'm leaving the Kruger National Park and traveling 93 miles to the Limpopo area near Hootsprite. We've come outside the National Park to get close to a very special animal indeed, one of the largest land mammals on the planet, but it's an animal that is in serious trouble. It has one very valuable commodity, and that is its horn. White rhinos have two formidable horns. The front one can grow up to one and a half meters in length. They're used for both defense and attack. Despite weighing up to two tons, rhinos can move at 25 miles an hour. They're very territorial, and if threatened, they let you know who's boss. White rhino numbers have been decimated by poaching, but I know a rehabilitation center where I'll have the privilege of seeing them up close. Hey, hi. Hi, Steve, I'm Christo. Nice to meet you, Christo, Steve. Christo Schreiber is head curator here and has spent the last eight years looking after injured rhinos. Within the center, the rhinos roam free. What's the story of the three animals we're going to see now? The two bigger cows have been here for two and a half years, and the younger one only came in this year, January. So, I mean, I guess the dream scenario would be that one day they could be back, running free. It, it would complete the circle of getting them in from an injured animal and um, releasing them back again, fully recovered, and then producing new offspring for future generations. Yeah. Wow, this looks like something out of Jurassic Park. So this is the corner of the enclosure, and clearly our rhinos were trying to make a break for freedom. I'm guessing they've got down underneath it, and just with the head pushed up like that, they have massive muscles that hold their head upright, particularly if they have a, a very well-developed horn. And you can see how strong it is. Look at that. Metal has just cracked and broken. They are epic animals. And they're over there somewhere. There's no real need for me to creep up on these animals because they know I'm here. They can see me, even with their relatively poor eyesight, they can smell me, they can certainly hear me. So really, it's just about approaching cautiously and carefully, not making any sudden movements, just not making them think that in any way I could be a threat. And they're coming towards us now, so it's time to back off, just gently. No sudden movements. Easy does it. These animals are lacking that majestic horn. The poaching of rhino for their horns is something that just fills me with rage, with, with absolute powerless rage. That horn is it's just hair. It has no medicinal properties whatsoever. And yet, because people have prized it, these animals could go extinct in my lifetime. OK. I think let's head back to the vehicle now. Evidently, these rhinos are hungry and they know that we've got food. So what do you think, Chris? So what's our, what's our best move from here? Uh, well, we'll just get them a bit away from here to give us space. And then um, they should follow us to the feeding spot. Fantastic. That's not something you see every day. Three white rhino trotting behind us in perfect single file. <laughs> Amazing. They are very, very lucky to be alive at all. Poachers caught these rhinos, but instead of killing them, they shot them with tranquilizer darts. They then chainsawed off the top of their horns and left them for dead. But they were found and treated, and as you can see, they are well on the road to recovery. And though they still look a little bit strange without that magnificent, majestic horn, they're alive. And that is a really good start. 